Hi thinkers, welcome to Data Structures in Java course on ThinkX Academy. In this video, we're going to start with the queues data structure. So we will implement queues in Java. So first of all, there are two ways to implement queues uh, in Java. We can use arrays to implement the queues and we can also use linked list to implement the queues. So we have two options to uh, create a queue data structure. So we are going to use arrays in this video and we know that arrays have a fixed size. It means that our queue will also have a fixed size which means that we are not allowed to add more elements once the array is filled. So uh, that's the major drawback of this, uh, array, uh, this array data structure. But the advantage is that we can access the elements easily inside of this arrays using the positions which goes from 0 to 4 in our case. So you can see that here I have defined this array and uh, this array represents 5 elements. So let's see what are the, uh, how, how are we going to perform operations inside of a queue. So insert operation is the first operation that we are going to discuss and insert operation in case of queue is known as nq. Right. So nq operation is actually the uh, insertion operation inside of a queue data structure just like in a stack data structure we have the push function uh, which pushes the uh, which inserts the element inside the stack. So here we have a queue data structure. Now queue data structure has a different sort of insertion strategy inside of the array or linked list, right? So in NQ operation, the queue data structure says that uh, if you want to implement queue data structure, you will have to make sure that the element is inserted at the end, right? So element is inserted at the end. And the second operation is the DQ operation and DQ operation is the deletion operation inside of a queue data structure and the queue data structure says that element should be removed from the first position, right, which is removed at start. Now you might be wondering why we are using these two uh, ways to insert and delete because we are actually going to implement a data structure which has a certain behavior. So in real life we can consider a queue as a line of let's say there are some people here let's say there are some five people here right and they're sitting inside they're inside of this queue and let's say they are they want to buy some ticket and they are forming up a queue so we know that if another person wants to join the queue he's not allowed to join in between that will be a violation right he cannot join from the start that is uh, that will be a violation so if another person wants to join the queue he will have to go to the end of the queue right that's why insertion is performed at the end of the queue and if we want to remove an element or a person from the queue this person which is in the first will get the ticket and will become the first element to come out of the queue right so that's why deletion is performed at the start and insertion is performed at the end position of the queue so this is a very important case that we have in here now we are going to see how we can implement this in uh, using arrays so first of all since we are going to perform insertion and deletion at different ends we need to actually have uh, two different positions which we can actually uh, say that these are the references so that we know where the queue starts and where the queue ends and for this we have two important variables and these are the front and the rear variables so we have front and rear variables so front represents the front of the queue the first member of the queue and rear represents the last member of the queue and initially they both are equal to minus one because our queue does not have any elements right so now let's say I want to insert some elements inside the queue. Let's say I want to insert one inside the queue. So what I will do is I will increment the value of front and rear by one. So now both are going to uh, be, both will be equal to zero. So front will be equal to zero and rear will also be equal to zero, right? And the element is inserted. Now let's see another condition. What will happen if I want to insert two? So if I want to enqueue two, what I will do is I will, uh, in, I'm only allowed to insert at the end, which means I will only increment the value of rear, right? So if I want to insert two, I will make a call to the NQ function and I will get, give it the value of the node that I wish to insert inside the queue, which is two. So front will remain same, front will not change, but the rear will be equal to one now, right? So rear will get incremented. So now you can see that front is going to point to here and now rear is going to point to here, right? And we will keep incrementing rear by inserting more and more values in this uh, array. And we know that once the rear position is equal to size minus one, we are going to say that the queue is full. So we are not allowed to push any further elements inside of this queue, right? So similarly, we have the DQ operation. So let's say I want to perform a DQ operation. In case of DQ, I do not need to specify any element here. I don't need to specify any element here because uh, deletion will be performed from the front position. 
Now you must be wondering that if we have an array data structure, how am I going to delete this element one here, right? So let's say I want to perform DQ operation and I wish to pop this element out of this queue. Now you might be wondering how can I do that? Uh, that and it is very simple. We are not going to actually remove it from this uh, queue. What we will do is we will increment the value of front. So front is pointing to zero here and now front will now point to one. So in case of DQ function, we are going to increment the value of front by one. So this is a very important operation. It does not actually delete the element from the array. It only is representing that now our queue is starting from one, right, which is front position and rear will be, let's say here at the last, right? So this is how we are going to perform these important operations inside of the queue data structure. And since our array is fixed, we are not allowed to insert uh, more than five elements inside of the queue. So let's write the program in Java to actually implement this strategy. So yeah, so here uh, I have the main function, which you can see here, right? So first of all, before starting with the main function, I'm going to define a class queue, which will be here, right? So I'm going to create a public class and I will call it as queue class, right? And now I'm going to define the size of the queue. So the size of the queue will be five, right? You can choose any value that you want, but here I'm choosing a size of five in our example. And now I'm going to create an array. So uh, let's say that this array is actually representing the nodes, right? And we know that using this new operator, I can create an array of size S I Z E, right? So this is how we can uh, create an array of size five. And now we know that our queue data structure will also have uh, two variables, which is the front and the rear variable. So I'm going to define it like this. And now what I will do is I will create a simple constructor and initialize my queue as front equals to minus one and rear is also equals to minus one, right? So initially uh, our queue, uh, we need to initialize both front and rear as minus one because uh, there are no elements inside of the queue, right? So now let's move on to some of the important utility functions, which is to uh, check whether our queue is uh, uh, full or not, right? So let's write a function to check whether our queue is full, right? So I'm going to create a very simple function, which will uh, be a Boolean uh, output and uh, it will give true if the queue is full and it will give false if the queue is not full and it is important because when we are trying to perform the NQ uh, operation we will need to see whether our queue is full or not right so how are we going to check whether our queue is full we will write this condition that if front is zero right which means our queue is starting from uh, zero and the rear position is equals to size minus one right so if our queue is size minus one then it means our queue is full so i'm going to return true in this case and now what i will do is i will write the else case which will say that else i'm going to return false right so you don't even need to write else case here you can just write return false here this is also true so this is, all, this is how we are going to write our boolean is full function. So remember, whenever you are writing any data structure, you write these utility functions, which are actually used to check whether the queue is full or empty. Now let's write another function, uh, which will actually give us whether the queue is empty. So we know that we're going to check whether the queue is empty in the case when we want to perform a deletion, right? So if our queue is empty, we cannot perform deletion. So I'm going to write the condition here that if the front is equals to equals to minus one, right? Then I'm going to just say that there is no uh, elements inside the queue. So I'm going to return true here. And in this case, I'm, else I will just return false, right? So these are two very important utility functions that we will have to write to check whether the queue is empty or full, right? So here I will write the comment that here we are checking whether the queue is empty. Now let's move on to the two very important functions, right? So the first one is the NQ operation, right? So NQ operation will not return anything. So I'm going to write void. And here I will have the NQ operation. So NQ function will take an element which we wish to insert. So I will say that it is int item that we want to insert, right? So the first thing is when we are trying to perform insertion, which is NQ, we need to check whether the queue is full Right, so we already have a utility function for that, which can uh, get us that value. So I will just make a call to is full function here. And here I'm going to say that if it is full, I'm just going to print 
that q is full in this case right so if q is full we are not going to insert any elements right so now uh, we have uh, taken care of the base case here which is very important and now we're going to move on to the next part which is that if the queue is not full then we need to perform the insertion operation right so again we will have to uh, consider one more base case which is uh, we, we need to see whether the first element uh, is there so if our front will be equal to equal to minus one so this is a very important case it may happen that uh, our front is equals to equals to minus one it means there are no elements inside the queue so i'm going to simply increment the value of a front as zero right so if front is equal to equal to minus one I'm going to make it zero. All right, so what will happen if it is not true? So I'm going to increment the value of rear. So initially we know that uh, front and rear will be equal to minus one. So this will actually change front as zero and rear will also be changed to zero, right? Now here in this line, we are going to perform insertion, right? So I'm going to write insertion here and it is very easy to insert. Uh, our array is nodes array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write nodes of rear position will be equal to the item that we wish to insert, right? So we know that we can only perform uh, insertion at the rear position. So this is how we are going to do that. And here uh, we can optionally print that insertion is successful, right? So you can say that inserted and here you can just write the element which you have inserted. So this is how our NQ function is going to look like. And now let's write the code for the uh, DQ function, which is again very important, right? So let's write the DQ function. And now uh, we know that DQ function is actually going to DQ an element of outside the queue. So it will have a return type of integer. So I'm going to write int DQ, right? So here also we need to check important case, which is if the, if our queue is empty, I'm going to return minus one here. Right, so here uh, I need to actually remove these lines. All right, so here uh, I need to just return minus one. And the reason why I'm returning minus one is because the uh, return type of uh, this DQ function is actually integer. So I need to actually uh, return minus one in this case. So if the queue uh, is empty, I'm going to return minus one, right? So now let's move on to the next case, which is uh, the the way to uh, delete the element. So uh, first of all, uh, I will just make sure that let, let's create a variable, which I will call as a temporary variable and it will hold the uh, element that we are trying to like uh, delete so that we can actually print it out later. So I'm just writing here uh, so that I can just print it out later on. So we have the front, right? The node at the front position, which we wish to delete. And uh, we know that deletion is very easy in this case. So here we have one more interesting case, which is what will happen if the queue, right? What will happen if the queue has only one element? So one element means that uh, front and rear will be equal. So I will write the case here that front and rear will be equal. In that case, we have only one element inside the queue. And uh, instead of writing equal equal, I can say that even if front is greater than equal to rear, then also uh, I have only one element inside of the queue, right? So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that since there are only one element, I'm going to um, convert the queue to the initial state, which is uh, front and rear will be equal to minus one, right? So this will uh, actually happen. So now our queue is again empty, right? So now let's write the next case, which is the else part of this one. So if our queue has multiple elements, I'm simply going to increment the value of front, right? So I will just increment the value of front and now our queue will start from the next position. And now what I can do is I will have to return this element, which is the temporary element, right? Because this DQ function is actually uh, going to return this uh, element that we are popping. So this temp variable, I need to define it here, right? So I will define it here. And here uh, we have this function right and return type of this function we are going to return the temporary value so this is how uh, the dq function is going to look like and this is how nq function is going to look like so this is our whole queue uh, data structure and now we will just need to write the uh, make calls to the nq and dq function so this whole code i will provide it in the 
uh, on our website www.thinkxacademy.com in the course uh, data structures in java you will find this tutorial and uh, you will find the whole uh, program for this one right so now now let's start with the final part which is to create a queue right and this is how i'm going to create a queue object and now what i will do is i will simply try to make a call to the dq function right so here in the dq function i'm going to add one more thing that uh, i will also print whenever an element has been dq'd so after every call i can actually write here system dot out dot print length element removed right so whenever i will make a call to this function uh, i will know that yes uh, the element is removed right so initially we know that our queue is empty so let's make a call to the dq function right to see what will be the output and right so here uh, let's try to just run this program so i'm going to run this from here so you can see uh, it says class queue is public should be declared okay so um, i need to just go to the source and instead of making this a public class i'm going to just make it class queue all right so here we do not have any here you can see i am i don't have any output so let's see what is wrong with here so we have the dq function here and when i make a call to this dq function since it is empty it will not return it will return minus 1 only and here also i need to write that system dot out dot print length and here also i will write that the queue is actually empty so we need to actually write it here before returning the value i will have to write it here so here i will just write that queue is empty to print it in the console right so now i will run it again and now you can see that it is showing that the queue is empty and now again i will move here and now let's make a call to uh, some very important functions uh, which is nq function and i'm going to create a for loop which will start from int i equals to 1 i less than 6 and i will fill this whole array in just one go so i'm just going to uh, make a call to the q dot nq operation and i will give the value i to it right so now i have this for loop uh, i have pushed all the elements inside this queue and now uh, if i wish to let's make a call to nq function again and let's say i wish to insert 7 it will not happen because our queue will be full by this uh, after this statement so now what i can do is i can just display q dot uh, dq and all this stuff we can do we can make as many calls as we want and we can also create a display function here inside this queue class which will be used to display the whole contents of the uh, nodes uh, array we can also do that so now i will hit run again and here you can see it has inserted 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 and then after that the queue becomes full and you can see uh, here the queue becomes full and now the element is removed so this program is working fine and you can test it yourself you can uh, write some more cases here so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching